a real fine finishing coat across there. We'll shamp that edge and that'll be it. Good job done. That's just about spot on. Just a little bit on the tight side, but this is the, the wick I'm going to use. It's cotton of some type, Deb. What is it? We're going to try and get it up, up through the hole. I think if I put some. Bees wax on the wood, it might make it a little bit more. Make it all bond together. Right, this time we've definitely got it, there it is. Let's cut the, cut the waxy bit off. Probably about there. And that goes. Down into the other reservoir, like that. Come on. And it sort of goes down there. It's filled with oil, and the oil, by capillary action, comes up the wick, down through the tube, and lubricates the bearing. What I'll do, I'll put some oil in, put it up on a, something in make sure it does actually drain through but it will because it's done it for hundreds of years so I'm sure it'll carry on doing it this is ordinary 1040 car engine oil nothing spectacular but I will probably be using the thicker oil when I actually run the engine yeah, we'll stand that on there come back and yeah, I want to see how much oil is actually dribbled through there. Right, it's been standing for about 10 minutes and you can see the oil's whipped through at the bottom. Where normally if that was just a hole it would have pissed straight through and served no purpose at all. So I'm quite happy with that. You can actually use a little a little hooky piece of wire instead of the, the wick and it will work. It'll actually capillary action down the, the side of the wire. But I like to use wick like that. It's been an hour and a half since I filled the little oiler up. As you can see it's completely empty now. So all the oil has been pulled up. I could pull your action down through the wick and out the bottom and all <laughs> my piece of wood. Anyway. This is actually oak and it's going to form the, the base for the engine. 
when your friend Mick eventually gets out the machine in it for us. For a little bit of oil, so he won't hurt that. I've decided I'm not going to paint this, I'm just going to clean it and give it a, a rub with probably some linseed oil. So basically, now I can wash things off. There's two holes to blank open the crank, then I can assemble the bottom end for real, so to speak. People have commented about the amount of end play on the crank. This will be sorted out. I'll be thrust washer goes on each end when it's all when it's all set up. But I really do like the look of those. They're quite nice. I've always had a fascination with pressure gauges. I think it stemmed from when I was a young lad, probably six or seven years old. My dad brought a pressure gauge in from work and I used to sit and polish it and take the back off and look how it worked. Anyway, I've just been given this one. Uh, my friend Richard gave us it. Unfortunately, the glass is broken and the face is quite badly marked. Uh, what I intend to do with it is make it into a wall clock. I'll get my friend Bob to clean the, the face up because he's good at that sort of thing. We'll have a look inside it. It's actually it's solid bronze. It's the real deal, this thing. We'll take the back off and have a look at the, the movement inside it. This will make a really excellent clock. Debs is quite keen to have it hanging on the wall as well. So. I mean that back must be eight to an inch thick. There you can see the, the works inside of it. That's the burden tube. The steam pressure goes into there, at least water pressure because there's no steam gets to this. But then we can see that's cooled down and it straightens that tries to straighten that tube out and that's what makes the the gauge works through this little linkage. I think what I'll do is I'll put the the hydraulic pressure test onto it and make it work and I'm sure the sure inside the back to show how it actually how it actually moves and how it actually works. This is a parallel thread. Normally the, the copper tube would go through a nut and it'll be flanged to seal on that face there. All I'm gonna do is put some PTFE tape on and just screw a parallel fitting on. Just simply so I can pressure test it. Not ideal, but I'm sure it'll do for what I wanted to do. I don't particularly like this stuff, but it does work. Test pump here. Just pump some water through to some air. Some, some air water under there. for a long time. I'm looking at the, the gauge on here. I'm showing the same reading as the, the gauge on here, which is exactly what I expected to do. It's creeping down because it's actually leaking back through that little valve. I 
turn that round so you can I'll turn the gears round so you can have a look and see and see how it actually actually works. It's quite interesting. Right, hopefully you'll be able to see the the tube turn straight out as the pressure goes onto it. It has moved there. See the quadrant moving. Last time that that gear jabber moves. <coughs> I'll leave the leave the bezel on and take it. Apart from the back, Everything's quality, everything's made out of brass. Out. That's the obviously the works of it. Name on there, Hopkinson. And that's a, a solid cast, and that's real, real quality. Solid brass. The looks like clock face is held in with one, one little screw. I think you can see that. Red 
red line at 120 psi. Note to 300 pounds. It's got BE 1860. That's possibly the date it was made, I don't know. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for clicking the like button. And as always, a massive thanks for all the, the well wishes that are still coming in. Incidentally, on about subscribers, I think I'm about 20 off the 50,000. Uh, 50,000 is quite a, quite a landmark in, in YouTube. And only get 100,000, you get a, a big uh, a big button. I know one of the two of the lads have got them, so it's, it's something to strive for, I suppose. But without... Uh, no viewers like yourselves, I wouldn't have any of this anyway, so thanks very much.